Hello, I'm Lynn Fraser with the Killaby Center for Recovery and the Radical Recovery Summit. And I'm here today with Dr. Richard Miller, the originator of iREST, a yoga nidra protocol for all kinds of, of trauma and healing, including warriors and, and regular people as well. And so I've asked Richard to just talk with us for a little bit about some things he's noticing around COVID-19 and some things that might help, as well as I'd love to hear more about your free online services, Richard. I know a number of people that have been going to those and really appreciating them. Wonderful, wonderful. Nice to be here with you, Lynn. So what would you like to inquire? <laughs> well, what, so we know that there's a elevated, elevated hypervigilance of fear and grief in our nervous system, in our mind. So what do you have in terms of thoughts about that or what people might do to work I mean, just even on the level of the nervous system, some things you're seeing and, and what might people do that would help? It is a highlighted time of stress that people are, are undergoing, and so many aren't used to being alone or sheltered in place. So I've been working with a lot of people who have grief and sadness is coming up, a sense of isolation, a lot of fear, obviously, because the ground has given way and people are uncertain. We know basically everything changes, but in times of extraordinary upheaval and change, it really is upsetting to the nervous system and we're, we're learning or using skills to re-engage to self-regulate. That's the main thing that I've been sharing with people is how do we keep a sense of self-regulation from day to day to day when everything about us is shifting into a, a new normal? So the tools that I've put together through this program I call IRES, the IRES program, there are real essential ways for helping us, I would say, tap into the resilience that's part of our innate inherent being and nourishing that every day and I say little and often throughout the day so we can meet the different stresses that otherwise deregulate our system. So things like shifting out of thinking into sensing. When I, I notice when we open our senses and we tune into sounds the sensation of the air touching our skin, where our feet or our bodies touching surfaces that are supporting, it, it anchors us in the present moment and it takes us out of disturbing thoughts. And I know that it serves then as a portal that then can open us to the breath. And I know that you know that longer exhalations help regulate increase heart rate variability, soothe the nervous system. So I help people tune back into the breath as sensation again, that keeps us away from these disturbing thoughts. But once I've helped a person anchor into this somatic perceptual way of being, then I ask them to explore what emotion or feeling tone or belief fear is present and let's now meet it from this ground of more restful uh, holistic or uh, sense of wholeness that we have within us i know that we all have the ability to respond to whatever life puts on our plate mm -hmm. it's a matter of checking into the body. The body knows how to respond and not getting caught up in our conditioned ways of being or these fears that arise. And so I'm really emphasizing in all my talks and presentations and my own work with myself. Mm -hmm. We've got to walk our own talk, otherwise we're not being helpful to anybody. To tap into this well of innate well-being, a dose of joy, a quality of kindness, where we rest in it, nourish it, and we can use imagery and memories to stimulate it. Mm -hmm. 
but as we nourish it and let it grow and expand, so we feel the whole body is resonating, we might say, in it. First, I want people to feel a deeper sense of connection with themselves. And then to recognize that it brings forward a deep quality of presence in our own body, but as we feel it, we can feel it as a field of interconnectedness with everyone around us, where we could be isolated in our own home or distance in from others, and yet we feel a deep sense of connection with others in the world around us through this underlying field that we all live in. From here, we have access then to responding to our emotions, these fears from a more centered place that has perspective in it. I know when we get dysregulated, our limbic system, our nervous system starts to hijack us and produce chemicals and ways of being that are upsetting. When we do a simple thing like body sensing breathing, it brings us back into our body. That limbic system aspect stops hijacking us and we bring in a perspective we otherwise don't have when we get so narrowed in and focused. Even when I ask people to open their senses so they're aware of sounds all around them and they attune to those, they will often quickly report how their thinking mind begins to relax, their fear, anxiety begins to relax, and they come back to having a more healthy perspective. I've talked a lot about emotions and thoughts and fear. They're all messengers to me. They're all asking to be seen and heard and connected with. And then when we meet them in that way, not as something we want to get rid of as enemies, but as allies who have messages to convey, and we stop and we inquire as simply as, so what brings you here today in this moment, this fear or this anxiety? And what would you like me to do as a response that would be most helpful? And then it's a quality of listening. So that sense of opening our senses, tuning into the body, the breath, opening to a quality of welcoming what is, and then attuning to listening. And if we could all be convinced that we all have the answer within us, I would say in our own garden here, and we're willing to stop and listen, the answers are, are nearby. And then people have the direct experience of that, and then that inspires us to go more deeply and to be more present. Yeah, and I'm aware when anxiety is present, it has a source. If I trace it back to its source, to some belief or experience, and ask what is most needed here, I get a firm response. It, it may take a little bit of listening, but I always get a response. Sometimes the response I get isn't what I may like. My preference might be different. Right. It may be asking me to call someone and have a challenging conversation or to shift something that I'm doing or stop doing. But I've come to deeply appreciate when I listen to the intelligence that's here and I follow its direction, I always come back to a sense of harmony within myself and a greater sense of harmony with the world around me. I, I love this beautiful quote from the Brihad or Anke Upanishad that says, whenever we deny an emotion, a thought, whenever we separate from ourself or think things should be other than the way they are. It will always give rise to some degree of anxiety, fear, or the feeling that something is not right or wrong. Mm -hmm. And I take solace in that, knowing then that anxiety and fear are not things I want to get rid of, but follow them to their source, attune to what they're asking of me, respond, and then everything 
becomes writing. Right. Yeah. It's such a simple practice. I like to say that it, it is really simple. It just doesn't happen to be always easy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Stop for a moment and right. take a pause. And in a way, this time of COVID is asking us all to stop and take a pause. Mm -hmm. And I take also great solace in that everybody's been rushing around thinking, how do we heal all these environmental issues and the smog? And we've all had to pause and I watch how quickly mother nature heals herself. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a wonderful message when we get out of the way of mother nature. She knows exactly what to do and she does it very quickly. Yes, and I true. think when we get out of our own way with a strong intention to listen and stop, we can heal very quickly. And then it's a question of just the follow through and the consistency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a beautiful system. I know when we've talked before, you've talked about the, the wholeness because it's already here and we need to be able to get back to that. And that's surprising to a lot of people. They've never stopped and considered that there is something about us, no matter what we've gone through, the trials and tribulations, there is something within us that's never been harmed, doesn't need to be healed, and is easily connected with. It does take time to continue remembering it. But once we get oriented to it and understand somatically, experientially, the impact that it can have. We have an incredible resource with which then to meet aspects that do need healing. And I know this from my own case, because when I was first exposed to this back in 1970, I, I was having a depression. I felt isolated and disconnected from myself. I was not a friend to my body or my emotions. Mm -hmm. And when I met this underlying quality of wholeness in an instant, the depression cleared, the mm -hmm. sense of reconnection came, the isolation went away, and I felt deeply connected to myself and the world. I'm well aware that that feeling faded within a few days, mm -hmm. but it had shown me that there was something here right. that was radically accessible. Mm -hmm. And I remember I started listening in that moment. I thought to myself, what was I doing right before that arose? And what was I doing right before it left? Oh, yeah. And that began to help me see how I was getting caught in thoughts. And when I let them go to a certain degree, that underlying wholeness would begin to announce itself first in a whisper, mm -hmm. later on in a very shouting voice to me. Mm -hmm. right. So simple, right. takes time, um, yeah. but it's accessible to all of us. Right. Oh, that's wonderful. So why don't you tell us how people can connect with you during this time. I know I've been referring people to some of your programs and they're wonderful. Well, if people go to my website, irest.org forward slash blog, I have a link to a Tuesday and Thursday free meditation that we're doing through this period and, and actually we'll continue it beyond mm -hmm. where we take an hour to address a particular theme, have an initial grounding meditation to bring us in, a short talk, and then a longer meditation in time for questions and answers. So we're talking to themes that help nourish this sense of our wholeness and being mm -hmm. and creating this underlying sense of resilience and well-being. We're also, I'll be offering actually a five-day online retreat. We're doing one-day um, retreats, one-day workshops, half-day, one hour. So we're trying to offer a lot of resources to people that meet their needs and their timing. We're at home maybe with our children or with surrounded by a family that we otherwise weren't with. 
And so sometimes it's all we can do to put ourselves in our bedroom for an hour and get away yeah. for a momentary meditation. And I realize I want to give people one minute, five minute, 15 minute, 30 minute, one hour, so that people don't think, oh, I don't have the time. I tell people, well, do you have 30 seconds? <laughs> Can you give me a minute? Uh, I know that this can be done very in little short bursts and then it's little and often. And the other thing people say is, well, how do I do it? I'm, I'm in the midst of my, my life. And I said, you can do this when you're talking, walking, chewing gum, eating, resting. Don't, don't pretend that there's something in the way. Right. Change your belief that maybe it's possible and then as Henry Ford said, if you believe it so, or if you don't believe it so, you're right. <laughs> so I want to believe it so. <laughs> but yeah, iRest.org, we have a lot of offerings that are free portals, yep. as well as our paid portings and other things we offer. And people who have older children could also bring the children. I know my son is working with his children on youngest is age 12 and on their nervous systems and meditating and breathing and relaxing. That would That's be so very helpful. true. And I've told people during my retreat that I'll be giving online in the evening, I'm asking who's ever attending to bring in your children, bring in your spouse, bring in who's ever present. We're all going to lie down for an evening bedtime meditation, Yoga Nidra. Yeah. yeah. And Today, my daughter is actually calling in because she's training as an IRS teacher. So she's calling into me, my yeah. wife, and one of our good friends over the phone. And so we'll put our phone on speaker, yeah. we'll lie down, and my daughter will give us her meditation. Oh, that's so great. these are so accessible. We don't need video. We just need a phone or some convenient way of hearing it. And then we can put it down and everybody can lie down. The other thing I was, I've been telling people when I do the meditations, I say, feel free to sit, mm -hmm. lie down, stand up, or even walk around as you're listening. Because right. I want them to realize this is not state specific. We right. need to learn this as we're going about washing the dishes, vacuuming, yeah. uh, taking a shower, talking to someone as I'm talking with you. I'm feeding and nourishing that inner well-being with a, with a good dose of joy. Mm. That's the way I begin my day. Right. I want to spend my day doing that. And, and truly, at the end of my day, as I fall asleep, that's what I want to take with me right. to sleep. Well, that's beautiful. Well, thank you so much for sharing this with everybody. And we'll put the links on here for people as well. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Well, always a delight to feel your smiling heart and know that <laughs> we're too. here sharing what we joy, what we're enjoying and what is our joy and hopefully awakening that joy in others as well. Yeah. Watering our gardens as we Watering know. our gardens, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Richard. Yeah, thank you, Lynn. The Killaby Center for Recovery is reaching out to some of the people we've interviewed for the Radical Recovery Summit. We're asking, how can you support people that are struggling during the COVID-19 pandemic? There is a range of programs and support that people are offering, as well as ways to frame this. What is it that's happening inside of you during this time? Come to RadicalRecoverySummit.com to click right through to the interviews.